NBC7's Nightly Check-In is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. We know how. Another stimulus package is on the horizon, but will it come soon enough, and will it be enough? Thanks so much for joining us for the Nightly Check-In. I'm Mark Mullen. So today, we learn new details of the package from Senate Republicans. Just like before, families would get $2,400 plus $500 per child. The $600 weekly unemployment bonus would be reduced to $200. Plus, whatever recipients get from the state, it would last for two months. The ultimate goal being to transition to a system that provides 70% of what a person used to make. Today, we heard from San Diego struggling to make ends meet who say federal government help can't come soon enough. I have zero right now, so I have till the 10th of next month before I get another $194. So until then, I'm just going on free food that are donations. Gary Dean has been a part-time custodian for Mira Costa College since he moved to California two years ago. He filed his unemployment claim three months ago and still hasn't received anything, he says. California's EDD has hired thousands of new workers to help process all the unemployment claims coming in. But people like Gary Dean say it hasn't helped him. The deadline for passing the next stimulus package is August the 7th. Now to a check at the local coronavirus numbers. 523 new cases reported today with a daily 8% positive rate, slightly pushing the rolling average back up after three days of declines to 5.8%. Overall, there are now 27,507 total cases. Total deaths remain at 533. No new fatalities reported today. California, once a leader in coronavirus containment, is now leading the country in coronavirus cases. With new restrictions in place, we wanted to know if there are any bright spots for the state's viral future. It's great that we're keeping our rates um, currently stable, but um, there's always going to be movement of people from different areas um, across the state, people coming from Arizona to vacation here. Dr. Jennifer Radin is an epidemiologist with Scripps Research working on catching the virus early with the help of wearable technology like Fitbits and Apple Watches. For her, the bright spot is that the tools to beat this, wearing face masks and social distance, which have already been proven to work, but they only work if folks commit. Right now, California has more than 454,000 COVID-19 cases. The world's biggest COVID-19 vaccine study kicks off today with a recruitment of 30,000 volunteers nationwide, including some here in San Diego. The biotech company Moderna is behind this vaccine, which will start phase three testing at UCSD School of Medicine. Here's how it works. At random, half of the volunteers will be immunized with the placebo. The second half will receive the vaccine, then another dose 28 days later. They will be monitored closely and asked to fill out an e-diary to report any symptoms or side effects. We want to make sure that any vaccine is going to work for those people who are at risk. Take someone who is willing to uh, really be a hero and participate in these kinds of clinical studies. Moderna is the first biotech company in the U.S. to enter this phase three and final round of coronavirus vaccine testing. To find out more details about how to sign up, if you're interested to be a volunteer at the UC San Diego site, you can go or to our website, NBC7.com. Well, the toilet paper supply has largely returned to normal after lockdown panic rush, but uh, where are the disinfecting wipes in the supply chain? Clorox and other brands use polyester stuff to make disinfecting wipes. That uh, raw material is also used to produce personal protective equipment such as masks, medical gowns, and medical wipes. The raw material shortage is a global problem as many other countries race to produce their own PPE. Unfortunately, the return to normal in the production of disinfecting wipes may be a bit longer road than it was for TP. More sunshine in store this week. Dagmar joins us next with your forecast right after this quick break. NBC7's nightly check-in is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. Call 1-800-BILL-HOWE. Bill Howe. We know how. Wet floor? Soggy mess? Call Bill Howe Plumbing. We're the slab leak experts. Our flood service division can repair any water damage and restore your home. For the great service and pricing you have come to expect, you know who to call. Because we know how. We know how. 
For your Tuesday, you're looking at a pretty similar day, but a little bit of a warm up in store for all four forecast zones. We will be continuing to see partly cloudy skies during the midday mark when we get that onshore breeze that pulls those low clouds over the beaches. Partly cloudy in the mornings and the evenings for those inland valley zones, but otherwise mostly sunny there. Your temperatures in the mountains, you're creeping up on the 90 degree mark, so the warm up is definitely being felt there. And the deserts 110, 11, and 12 will continue to feel that heat warming as we head through the rest of this work week. So Tuesday, a little bit of a warm up already uh, being felt by three of the four forecast zones. We'll see what is in store for the beaches as we head through this work week. Hundreds of people gathered on the beach last night to worship and also to protest at Cardiff State Beach. More than 1,200 people protested over lack of religious freedoms, they say, because of the coronavirus. Although advertisements for the event told people to bring masks and practice social distancing, our crews at the scene said, and you can see this for yourself, not really the case for a lot of those folks there in attendance. Yeah, there was a sense that this was kind of swelling with excitement. There was a building up of excitement, and we, we are not surprised. It's frustrating to not be able to gather legally in church, so we'll just do it outside in the open air. Although organizers say they had a permit for the protest, state lifeguards say they did not. More events like this one are expected to happen throughout the state. Summertime celebrations have officials across the country sounded the alarm. Despite bars and other venues being shut down, private social gatherings at homes are much harder to regulate, and they are leading to a cluster of COVID-19 cases. According to experts, parties have the potential to turn into super spreader events if people are crowded together, especially inside and not wearing masks. Sort of surprised me is how many times it really is just an informal get together uh, that is causing the spread. Uh, I think there's a general tendency when we're with people that we know, uh, maybe not to be as concerned. For those who are looking to safely see loved ones, there is a safe way to do it. Experts say limit gatherings to a small group, stay outdoors, wear masks, and keep that six foot distance between you and others. If possible, guests should also have their own food and drink so people are not sharing. That's gonna do it for our nightly check-in. I'm Mark Mullen, have a terrific night.